she's finally built up and ready to ride the TRS RR 2024 model and I've gone for the 300cc electric start this year I'm back on the TRS and doing something a little bit different going for the electric start model just fancied a little bit of a change with the trials and the events that I'll be doing this year I really think this particular model could be just what I've been looking for we've done another custom build so let's walk you through it and show you everything that I've done Now to go for the electric start model, it is a little bit more expensive. You're looking around £275 more to have the electric start version over the kick start in this particular model. Now the electric start bikes come with the alloy tech forks over the steel in the RR and this is just to get the weight down a little bit. The electric start version is two and a half kilograms heavier than the kick start version. And a lot of that is obviously in the electric start motor and the starter gear that's on the end of the flywheel. And this is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to go for this bike this year, because that gear is really the equivalent of having a flywheel weight fitted to the bike. So it's going to be a slightly softer, smoother power delivery than the kickstart version. Now with these tech forks, I've gone for a heavier spring. I've got the 10 newton meter spring and that's ideal for my weight. On the cockpit, I've gone for Renthal handlebars at 4.5 inch rise. I might swap those out to 5 inch for the Scottish Six Day Trial, but in all the other events, I'll be running the 4.5 inch rise. I find that's a bit more comfortable and better for the conditions and, uh, and the terrain that I ride. I'm trying out the Domino dual skin grips. These are slightly chunkier than the slim line or some other grips like the Renthal. I've got relatively big hands and I just thought I wanted to try something new. Let's see if that helped at all. Uh, I've not been riding as much this past year, so my hands aren't as strong as they used to be. And I find just having a slightly fatter grip helps me grip hold of the bike a little bit better. They're nice and grippy, and they've got these tough rubber ends, so it's almost the equivalent of having a bar end. So they should last really well, but I'll let you know how I get on with those. Now on the clutch, you'll see I've gone for the AJP small master cylinder. Now this clutch, is a little bit more progressive uh, than the standard brake tech lever that comes on the bike. So you get a little bit more modulation on the, uh, on the biting point. The only thing that you do have to be careful with with these though, at the very end of the travel, it does release the clutch very quickly. So it's not gonna be ideal for everybody, but for my riding style, I'm actually quite enjoying that clutch lever. Carrying on with the clutch, I've got the soft pressure plate uh, which comes standard in the 1Rs. I just prefer having a slightly lighter clutch and again that helps ever so slightly with making the clutch a little bit slower. The TRS's all come with Galford discs and pads. Personally I think that's the best possible braking power you can get uh, on a trials bike. The only thing I have done is I've swapped out the rear Galford disc for one of the FIM approved ones. Slightly stronger uh, and I think they do have a little bit better braking power. Again with the events I'll be doing like the, the Scottish Six Day and the S3 Nationals it's a little bit stronger when you're going up the rocky streams you're a bit less likely to uh, bend a disc something like that um, so it's a little bit more reliable I'd say hence why I've swapped that over. I've got the Jitsi Carbon Fork Guards and with some of our team sponsors for this year. So big shout out to Michelin, Ride Nutrition, Jitsi, Putaline and Muckoff for helping us out. We really appreciate that. Now the front pipes on the RR come as standard with a titanium pipe. I've swapped mine out for a longer front pipe made by S3, also titanium. And this gives the bike a little bit more of a softer bottom end again. Where I've not been riding as much this past year, I'm a little bit rusty, I'm not as fit as I used to be, and I'm not gonna have loads of time to prepare for Scotland. So having a bike that's got all the power I need, but comes in a nice smooth power delivery is really gonna help me. Um, and I've been really impressed with that, um, with that pipe. It just seems to make the bottom end really, really smooth and manageable for me. I've got the S3 Hard Rock footrests, I've used the curve footrests in the past, which have got a, a larger tilt on them, um, but I've gone for a slightly flatter peg this year, finding those really comfortable and super grippy with those adjustable grub screws. Now, when it comes to mud guards and such, I've got the front splash guard with the flap that sticks out the front. That helps keep all the muck out of the radiator, which obviously keeps the bike running cooler. I've also got the airbox mouth protection, 
um, which is hard to see on the bike but that helps prevent a lot of the water and mud getting in through the airbox mouth keeping your airbox nice and clean and dry I've got my Kian extended float bowl I've got a spring-loaded idle adjuster so I can tweak that by my hands rather than having to get a screwdriver nice and handy now the TRS electric starts also come with a handy choke lever extender so it's really easy to get the choke on and off uh, I get a lot of customers complain how hard it is to to get to their choke levers on key and carb so that's definitely worth looking at uh, investing in one of those if you haven't got one already I'm using a fast action throttle and I'm using the Apico aluminium throttle tube nice quality and it's got a bearing on the end of the throttle so it keeps it really smooth I'm also using the Jitsi throttle wheel we've removed the fuel tap and gone for a quick release system on the tank to carburetor purely just to make things a little bit more simple and less cluttered and it's a lot easier for me to service the bike this way it means I can remove the tank and not have to worry about uh, trying to drain the fuel or anything like that from um, from the bike as you'll be able to see we have wrapped the bottom of the tank in some heat shield protection just to keep the tank as cool as possible allowing the petrol to stay nice and cool so the performance of the bike won't change um, I'm going to be doing some long days on the bike where the bike's going to be running for like nine nine hours or so and the tank can get a little bit warmer and which can warm the fuel we're just trying to get the best performance out of the bike now as you can see I've removed the kickstart but don't worry they all come with a kickstart as standard still with the electric start I've just been so impressed with how reliable it's been that I feel I don't need it uh, the bike is two and a half kilograms heavier than the kickstart version so I've just taken a little bit of weight off the bike by removing it how many options do you need to start a bike so we've stripped out all the light wiring uh, just because I feel it's unnecessary I don't need it I don't ride in the dark we've also got one wiring loom which has the kill button and the electric start all in one piece so it's a lot tidier only using one cable um, so the cable management on the bike is really clean and sleek I'm running the starter button and the kill button on the right hand side I do a lot of filming so I need to be able to hold the camera up and talk to the camera whilst riding and using the Jitsi lanyard I can't really do that if it's on my left hand hence why I've done it that way I don't think it looks too cluttered at all I'm using the Jitsi non-stretch lanyard I find these a little bit better than the stretchy ones they don't ping off and go flying like the uh, like the stretchy ones do with my Rager rear shock I've had a Olin's bump stop put on the bike rather than the genuine Rager one with that I find the, the suspension is just a little bit more plusher and it suits my riding style I'm using standard gearing on the bike I just uh, feel they know what they're doing with that I've got the larger CSP bash plate these are slightly wider than the original and as you can see it comes out a little bit more around the back of the frame where the footrest hangers are just protects the frame out a little bit more the bike comes standard with the Michelin X11 tyres and yeah this is my bike for 2024 we hope you like it look at the description below there'll be a link to all the parts used on my bike build so if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe and give us a like <laughs>